Um, since we're a small class today, I guess I could get your names. What's your name? I'm Charlie. Charlie? That's my daughter's name, too. Nice to meet you, Charlie. What's your name? I'm um, Maggie. Maggie, hi. I'm Benj. And I'm Azar. This is Azar. Um, I teach graphic design at Holyoke Community College right up the road. And um, we do a lot of poster design up there. And Azar is one of my star students. She's done some great work. And um, yeah, we're, we're excited about the contest and excited to have you guys here today. So thanks for coming. Uh, before we get started, do you, have you guys like read over the rules of the contest and the parameters of it and everything? OK. So just to kind of reiterate, um, all poster submissions need to be an original concept. OK? Um, we will be limiting one entry per person. Okay, so only you can only enter one entry. So if you do five designs, five ideas, that's great because then you can pick your best one and enter it. Okay, um, the size will be 14 inches by 22 inches, which is a little bit smaller than this, about probably about half this size. Um, and you'll be getting the paper for that today. Okay. Um, all entries must be submitted with an entry form you will fill out. Okay, so um, the entry form needs to be filled out with your poster submission. And Nancy has been kind enough to bring us the poster size. Here it is. Thank you, Azar. And finally, all entries must be okay for all ages. Okay, so the, um, the library does reserve the right to omit any entries that it deems inappropriate. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the submissions will be brought to the library starting February 23rd, and the contest closes March 18th at 4 p.m., okay? So if you're here on March 18th at 4.01 p.m., you may not get your poster into the contest, okay? So basically starting within five days, and then you have almost a month, you know, until March 18th to get everything done, okay? Okay, cool. So... Have you guys designed any posters before? Like on Canva. On, ca on what? Canva. Ca on Canva, okay. Like, and you too, Maggie? Yeah. Yeah? How did it go? Um, I mean, it's pretty, they pretty much do it for you on Canva. They pretty much yeah, do it for you, right? It. Yeah, they pretty much do it for you. What about like, on paper? Have you ever done it with modern? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for like school. For school? Yeah, so it's yeah. Not right. it's more like information. Yeah, like for events and things like yeah, that. Or it's like classwork. Or classwork. Okay. Like any social issues? Yeah, yeah kind of like for history. So give us like a concept and then we have to make a poster and like a, a motto that okay. goes with the topic. So okay, cool. So you've got a little bit of background on like starting off with an idea and then building a poster out of it. That's great. So I'm going to just sort of go through a few slides here that kind of give you sort of the basics of poster design. So this is sort of the basics of poster design, okay? These are just some of the kind of, I wouldn't even call them rules, but sort of guidelines you can follow when coming up with a poster. Um, and the first thing is that the aesthetic doesn't matter um, until you have a good idea or a concept. Okay, so the idea should drive the aesthetic. Okay, so you're not sort of, you're not saying like, well, I want a bunny rabbit on my poster. Or I want a tiger on my poster. You're only including imagery and text that makes sense for your idea. So like Maggie, I heard you say that you have made posters being given an idea first and then sort of going down from there, right? And that's great, okay? So the, that's what makes this a successful poster is having the idea first and then the visuals. Um, this is a technique that's used in a lot of poster design. It's called combination. I call it two things at once, okay? But you'll see this in a lot of poster design and it's a very catchy and kind of easy way to do things, okay? So when you look at these two, what, what's happening here, like what are the two things that are happening? Yeah. It's a heart and pencils. It's a heart and pencils, right? Okay. So a heart and pencils, each one of those sort of carries what's called a connotation with it. Do you know what a connotation is? Yeah. Okay. So what are the connotations or ideas behind a pencil? Like think about a pencil. It's something you write with, right? Education. Education. What's that? School supplies. 
Okay, school supplies. What about more like um, conceptual things? Like physically, yes, it's a school supply, but what about the idea behind a pencil? What does a pencil sort of signify? Um, like your voice. Like your voice, okay, like, like being heard, sure, yep. What about something like literacy, maybe? Okay, I heard you say education. Um, a pencil can also sort of indicate the idea of connection. Okay, maybe from writing letters to people, sure, you know, sharing ideas with people, okay. Now, what is the thing that's being formed by the two pencils? A heart, okay. What does a heart indicate? Love appreciation. appreciation, love, caring, also connection, okay. So this idea of combining two images into one can be really sort of powerful and engaging, right? Um, this, this slide, I'm sort of showing that like, you know, you said you guys have designed posters on Canva and it's, it's really what it's easy. It pretty much does it for you. Okay. But sometimes posters are a little bit more engaging when you show more of yourself in it. Okay. So like getting off the computer and doing things by hand can give a poster a lot more sort of soul and life. Okay. So you don't always have to do it on the computer. And in fact, that's why we're starting with markers and papers here, okay? Okay, this is called the rule of fives. So think about when you've seen a poster, okay? Like maybe a time that you've seen a poster somewhere. It could be a movie poster, it could be a bus stop poster. Can either of you think of a time that you've seen a poster? Okay, where did you see a poster? Um, like in like the side of a, like, I guess it's a building or like a fence or something, like in New York City. In New York City. Great. Posters all over New York City, right? And and you've seen like those walls where there's hundreds and hundreds of posters. And what are they doing? What are, what are, what are they, what is each one of those posters trying to do? Uh, right. But how, what's it trying to do to you? Okay, my attention. Getting your attention. Okay. Each one of those posters is getting trying to get your attention. And there's a hundred different posters on that wall, okay? Now, the poster that's going to grab your attention, is it the one with little tiny writing? No. Is it the one with something big and bold and bright? Yes, okay? So that starts off what's called the rule of fives. So a poster needs to be visible and attention grabbing from 50 feet away, five feet away, and then five inches away. And what that means is this, okay? You're walking down the street, you're in New York City, and you see a whole bunch of posters, and one of them grabs your attention. And even though it's like kind of down the block or across the street, it grabs your attention and you want to you want to learn more. Okay. You see your favorite artist up there, you see your favorite musician, right? And okay, well, what's going on with this poster? So you walk up to that poster, and then there's a little bit more information. Now you're five feet away. And you're reading more information. And then if you really need the details, you get five inches away. And that's when you can see the really kind of small stuff. Okay. So right off the bat, these three posters, what are they for? Target. Okay. How do we know that? The bullseye, which is Target's logo, right? We're not even showing the whole logo. You instantly recognize it from so far away, right? And whether you're a Target fan or not, it grabs your attention. Okay, make sense? Okay. Now this kind of relates to that. This is the idea of using scale, okay? So scale can be a very, very strong visual tool when doing poster design, okay? One of the reasons that we love that mural right there is because there are giant, giant figures on it, giant people, right? They're bigger than life, okay? And that's very, very attention grabbing. Now, in this case, what are these posters for? What are they advertising? Oh, well, Target. Target, right? These are Target posters. However, they're showing products, okay? A badminton thingy, a popsicle, and a beach ball that are blown way up out of proportion, way bigger than they normally would be in life, right? And we know that because a little tiny shopping cart right there, okay? So these are a little bit playful, a little bit goofy, a little bit funny, okay? But 
using this idea of things going way out of proportion can be very effective and, and eye-catching. Okay, and finally, this is the KISS simple, K-I-S-S. Anybody heard that before? Yeah. Nancy, what does that stand for? Keep it simple, stupid. Right, I say, yeah, and to be friendly, I used to say keep it simple, silly, silly. you know? Yeah. But yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. The simpler your poster, the more effective it's going to be, okay? You don't want to put a lot of stuff on it because it's just going to lose people's attention, all right? So, very simple poster, okay? What is this poster about? Well, well, I feel like it's not about a but movie maybe? Not quite. Look at it closely. Do you see any hidden images in there? The eyes, the shirt. Oh, is it a cigarette? Something? It's a cigarette. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Taking time off. Okay. So, what we're doing here is we're using the two things at once principle. We're combining the letter I into a cigarette, right? A very simple shape, okay? But what we're saying is that cigarette smoking is a ticking time bomb. Okay, by smoking cigarettes, you're essentially shortening your life, right? Okay, this poster does say it, say the Arctic, but it's also showing it, okay? Two things at once. What are the two images that are being combined here? This and the polar bear. The fist and the polar bear, right. So the fist, is this idea of like empowerment, right? And like sending a strong message, right? We've seen the fist used in, in tons of different activism campaigns throughout the decades, even now, okay? And the polar bear is an icon of the Arctic, okay? So save the Arctic. Do you guys think this poster would work if it didn't even say save the Arctic? Do you think you'd get it? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Maybe there's like water melting or something. Sure, yeah, maybe something else to support yeah. it, okay? But the idea here, you guys, is that we don't always need to say it. If we show it, it can be just as effective, okay? Okay, this is a poster for the group called Amnesty International. And what is it showing here? Um, like barbed wire. Yep. What does the barbed wire symbolize? Uh, like military captain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Separating people. Separating people, keeping people imprisoned or possibly enslaved, right? Okay. The peace sign, that's a, a very common symbol, right? We all recognize that. But it's doing something else here. It is okay. cutting it, right? Okay. So again, sort of just simple, simple imagery that carries meaning and putting things together, right? Okay, another one. Um, the cigarettes here are emblematic of like smokestacks, okay? Stop burning our life again. This is not so much about smoking. What do you think this could be about? Pollution. Pollution, okay? So this idea of a cigarette being something that pollutes your body is now being turned into something that pollutes the air. Okay, makes sense. Okay, this is the last one. What is this about? Homelessness, okay. So this idea that often you see homeless people that are using cardboard or found materials to create shelter for themselves, okay. Um, and possibly even the idea that we see people out in the world who might be homeless, we don't even realize, it, okay. Right. So again, like this is something that is interesting because the poster is actually, you know, resembles a piece of the, one of those materials that a homeless person might use to create shelter. Okay. Okay. Um, Azar wants to say some things, being a wonderful design student. So I'll let you take the floor. Sure, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, so before I had classes with a professor bench, I was choosing um, colors, just like the ones I like. I never thought about it 
as like with the speed in the design, you know, like same as font. They're really uh, very strong, um, um, active, you know, elements that you could use in the design. So before I like to start with bent, everything I used to do, like in my designs, is just like all oh, what I like, you know, like the red, uh, you know, the color red or green or whatever, you know, like, but after like one part, then he taught me how to think about colors as half of the design success, you know, like in the font as well, you know, so fonts are very effective in the design, you know, like you can't use um like a font that is uh talking like maybe like used in um a commercial for a truck, you know, like business, you know, use it in uh probably in a fruit, you know, like um, commercial, you know, so it's it's very effective, you know, and it's it, it could make a difference in a design, you know, like poster or any other designs, you know, they're very important. Since you guys are doing everything with marks, you don't really have to worry about like the font and everything. But for the future, like since right now, like all the designs have been done online, font like are really important. I and mean, you can choose a font you like and the colors too, you know, like you have the warm color and the cool color, you know, like the the, the warm color is more of like um a strong color, like dark red, dark orange, dark uh, blue, you know, these are like the one. If you want to make them like cool, you just turn down the opacity, right? Mm -hmm. am, I, am I right? Sure. This is how I think about it. Like everything, like you make it cool, you just turn down the opacity, then all the colors are cool. So this is just like something like maybe tips that I learned, you know, like that could help you as a designer, you know, like to make your poster success. Thank you, Azar. And and just to sort of like like um, back up her point, you know, it doesn't matter if you design on a computer. It doesn't matter if you design on paper. It doesn't matter if you design with paint. It doesn't matter if you design with vegetables. You know, you could, you guys are designers now, and that doesn't mean okay, I open Canva or I open Photoshop, right? It means that you come up with the best way to design your poster, right? And we can start off with markers and paper, um, but whatever medium you do could be something totally different. You know, um, some of the most exciting designs are things that have been done with actual objects, okay, like in real life, and then photographed, and then a print made of the photograph. You know, so you can use today to kind of sketch some ideas and brainstorm, but whatever you design with in the end is kind of up to you, okay. Now, okay, go ahead, Nancy. Uh, just note that the only criteria is that it stays within the, the size limitation. But yes. then after that, yes, no. you can do any Thank medium. You. Absolutely. So within that 14 by 22. And the other thing that I should mention is that most posters are vertical. Okay. You're not going to see a lot of poster designs that are horizontal. Most of them are vertical like that. Okay. All right, cool. Um, do you guys have any questions? Are we like just be diversity as like concept or practice with other? The, the subject for this is diversity. Oh, but we yep. have four themes. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, let me mention this. Yeah, thank you. So, so, um, this sheet, if you haven't seen it, does outline sort of four themes of diversity. Okay. The beauty of diversity is one. Including me in, okay, so being included, feeling included, um, envisioning a bright future, okay, so sort of the future of diversity and, and how it fits in with society, and finally, a, a call to action. Do you guys know what a call to action is? For a speaker, right? It's, it's like when a design prompts you to do something. Oh, yeah. Okay, right? So let's everybody do this, or let's go to this event, or let's donate money here, or let's um, get together and do this thing. I believe you people will usually use the microphone, that large microphone as a sample to um, symbolize that. Sure, yeah, but you know what's another kind of call to action image is yeah, with this, yeah. right? 
that's a very strong call to action image. So um, you guys can pick one of the themes. And of course, as you're brainstorming, you might decide to pick all four of the themes. You know what I mean? But your final poster will sort of relate to one of those themes. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. That was a long answer for a simple question. <laughs> Do you guys have any other questions? You sure? Charlie? Uh, I think I Okay. So here's what I want to do now is I thought that together we could do some, a little bit of brainstorming, okay? Um, in the world of graphic design, it doesn't happen by yourself. It happens with feedback from other people. And as Zara can tell you that in our classes at HCC, we have things called critiques, which is where we show our ideas to our classmates and our professors. And everybody bounces ideas off each other. You know, well, you could try this, or you could try that. And the other thing that's great about that process is that everybody sees each other each other's ideas too, and they say, "Oh, that was really cool what Julio did, or really cool what Mike did." You know, um, I like that idea, and I'm, I'm not going to steal his idea, but I'm going to kind of borrow it and tweak it a little bit. You know, so design happens as a very collaborative process. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just for maybe about five minutes, I want to brainstorm some words around the idea of diversity. And then after that, we'll spend maybe five minutes brainstorming some images around diversity. Okay. So let me grab a marker here. And this activity is called mind mapping. Okay. Have you guys heard of mind mapping? Okay, so this is this is a very common kind of brainstorming activity. And what we're going to do is sort of branch out from diversity, diversity being our central theme. And whatever word do you think of that relates to diversity, just you can be as free as you want, okay? It doesn't even, I mean, even if you say like taco, you know, or even if you say like grass, it doesn't matter, you know? Whatever we think of when we think of diversity, okay? We're just going to kind of free our minds, okay? So, who's got one? Anything, yeah. Inclusion. Inclusion, great. Okay. Inclusion. And I'm going to write as neatly as I can. And these words, as we come up with them, can help sort of drive the verbiage, the text that goes into the poster. Okay. Who's got another? Nancy. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. Okay, great. So when, you, when we see the word ethnicity, that might prompt us to think that culture. Culture. Okay, good. Now, when we see certain words, they might spark other words. For instance, ethnicity is one form of diversity, but there's other forms of diversity too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's um, gender identity, for instance. Okay, so there's many different levels of diversity. What else? As free as you want. Earth. Earth. Okay, great. Unique? Awesome. That's great. What else? I was going to say beautiful. Beautiful, sure. I'll branch that off of unique because that's sort of an, kind of an individual. Well, it doesn't have to be individual, but I'll, you know what? I'll give it its own, I'll give it its own stamp. Do two more minutes, yeah. Age. Age, perfect, right? Age certainly represents diversity. In this room, we have sort of a wide range of ages, okay? So we have a very diverse room in terms of age, okay? Yeah. Socioeconomic. Socioeconomic, great. I'm just going to do socioeco, okay? Yeah. Um, nationality, and race. nationality, race. Okay. Nationality, and race. And we don't have to be specific either about different types of diversity. We can think about things that diversity might represent or how diversity might make us feel. You know. Um, empower. Empower. Great. Awesome. Great work.
Okay, let's do one more minute. I don't know how to say. I don't want to say disabled. I mean, difficulty able challenge. 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 I don't want to say it in a negative way. Right. So we could say. Um, um, we can say accessibility. accessibility. Okay, that's that's kind of a good word. It's sort of a little more positive. Yeah. Maybe, sure. Okay, accessibility. Let's come up with three more. Bring yourself up. It could be anything. Um, how about kindness? Kindness. Awesome. Um, like, the word is like, like teamwork, I guess, but, you know, like, if everyone were to, like, lift each other up, so I guess uplifting. Uplifting, there you go, right? Sometimes yeah. when you talk it out, the word sometimes comes to you, right? Okay, good, uplifting. Okay. Yeah. Um, the word that probably is like blindness that you don't see color, race, nothing. Um, so we could say it's colorblind, maybe. Because um, it's not only for the color, but yeah. also everything else. Any type of diversity. Um, like the justice is supposed to be blind. Sure. Um, um, what so probably you? just. Just, okay, sure, right. Um, or fairness, maybe. Yeah. Yep, okay, so I'll say. We'll make that just two words. We'll say just and fairness. Equality. Equality. And we're running out of room. So <laughs> that means that we're going to tear this off. And this is the part where I accidentally rip it in half. And I'll try very hard not to. We're going to tear this off. And you don't need to just put that on the screen. So those are some words around the idea of diversity. Now let's think of some images. And we'll spend about five minutes on this activity. Okay? And I'm not going to draw them, but we're going to write them down. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking like, um, sort of like, just for in general, like different cultural patterns. Patterns, sure, great, yeah, cultural patterns, for sure, yep. Cultural patterns, flags, good, yep. The rainbow. Rainbow, perfect. I was going to say like color palettes, you know, like skin tones and stuff like that. Yep, color palettes, and um, I think that the mural there is a great example of that, for sure, right? Showing a variety of skin tones. Absolutely. Yep. What else? Um, like uh, a wheelchair. A wheelchair? Sure. Yep. I mean, when we see the handicap accessible sign, yeah. right, that automatically indicates to us, it, it does two things, right? It says, okay, I know there's a wheelchair ramp here, but it also says, that this building or this organization is being inclusive, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So wheelchair. What else? What are some sort of um, thinking back to the examples that we saw? What are some icons or emblems that you're familiar with that might sort of represent diversity? Um, hand holding. Hand holding or the handshake. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hands. Um, connected. Yeah, or like specifically when they'll have a bunch of different color people together. So, um, like, uh, sometimes they all put their hands together or like hand holding. Well, okay. like the team, the team hand in when there's a bunch of hands together. Right? Team hands. Yeah. Team hands. How's that sound? You like that as all? Well? Yeah. yeah. Team hands, sure, right? Or the huddle. Yeah. Okay. What others? Uh, just a smile. Smile, sure, absolutely, right. Smile. Heart. Heart, yeah. Let's 
Let's think of three more. Hug. Hug. Awesome. Two more. We can do it. Are these are things that we would see on other posters. Maybe, sure. The so fist, that's the one that you see a lot. Okay, okay, yeah. And we have really good YouTube. And you have different religions. Or like, oh, yeah. Except that, like, people wear like, jobs or like. Do you, do you know that bumper sticker that says coexist? Uh, yeah. Right? And then this is the symbol from multiple different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we can say, like, like religious iconography. Yeah. Yeah. Like equal sign. Equality, equal sign. Yeah. Great. Let's do two more because I think we're on a little bit of a roll. The more ideas you have, the easier it is to get ideas for your design. And the more ideas you have, the more ideas you have. Right? So yeah. let's do two more. Okay. The world. the world, right? Sure. So different ecosystems or environments. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I think like some of this was a contrast. Like one is like I don't know, like a kid in this location versus a kid in that side. Well, like night day or um, like you know, like one side of the world versus the other. Side. Right. Like so, sort of showing that like these two things are the same, even though they might look different. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So we could say like contrasting images, maybe. Okay, that's great. Contrasting images. Okay. So we have a set of wonderful image ideas here. We have a set of wonderful text ideas here. Okay. This gives you guys a lot to work with. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's hold these up. So let's kind of pull them towards the camera. The camera's over there. That's a tall thing. So these are our text ideas and our image ideas. Scooch back a little bit. And hold it up. Yeah. Hold it up. Oh, it's this way. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of it. There you go. Okay, so we've got a lot of ideas to work with here. Okay? Yeah. Now, thinking about our image ideas, this supports the idea of show me, don't tell me. Okay, mm -hmm. Show me, don't tell me. Show me a great image that's powerful and engaging. But don't worry a lot of stuff because you're going to lose my attention. Okay? The words can be used to be combined with the images, right? We saw the ticking time bomb example where the eye became the cigarette, okay? Um, when you look at these words and even maybe think of your own words, think about ways that you can use the word to create a visual, okay? Um, for example, In the word diversity, there's the letter I, okay? The I means me, okay? The letter I means me. Now, if you're sort of saying, if you're sort of promoting this idea that I support diversity, okay? How can we use that letter I to support diversity, okay? That's just one idea that came off the top of my head. But that's how this process works. Okay. okay. So you guys have a lot to go on here. You're both very, very creative people. And everyone in the audience, you have a lot to go on here. So I think that based on this, you can generate some really great ideas. Okay. Keep in mind the four themes of the contest. And what you guys can do here is you can do it on your whole page if you want. Sometimes it's easier to divide it in four and have smaller little sections because a smaller section, right, there you go, Maggie. So a smaller section can be less intimidating to work with. 
and you can just start, start sort of brainstorming. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions for Zach? No, but just remind the audience to do March 18th is the deadline. Yeah, March, so March 18th is the deadline. Um, uh, you can drop it off anytime between the, the 23rd, March. right? Yeah, so, so starting the 23rd, which is tomorrow yeah. until March 18th, um, you have basically that four week window of time to get some awesome ideas going. Okay, and we really, really look forward to seeing this. Really excited about this. So thank you, Nancy, and thank you for the whole Thank you. Thank you.